Hi everyone, welcome to the first episode of our Family Homelessness Information Series. My name is Kara Lair. I'm the Communication Specialist here at In From The Cold and I'm here with Abe Brown, our Executive Director. Throughout the series, we will be focusing our online content around the issues pertaining to family homelessness as a way to educate and engage you, our audience, on the different issues surrounding family homelessness. We welcome all comments and questions that you may have, and before we dive into the issues, I'm going to let Abe talk about who we are and why we wanted to launch this series. Well, thanks, Karen. I'm really excited about this because of the fact that, you know, In From The Cold has been serving uh, vulnerable uh, Calgarians who are in families uh, literally for almost 21 years. And uh, we operate Alberta's only street level, uh, no barrier emergency family shelter. And uh, of course, what that means is, you know, different from a domestic violence shelter, which, uh, you know, is so important, takes families in who have uh, recently been victims of domestic violence. Uh, we take care of adults accompanied by children uh, who are experiencing a housing crisis. And uh, there could be many reasons for that. Sometimes we do uh, take care of families who are victims of domestic violence. Sometimes it can be a breakdown uh, of, of a family sponsorship situation from a newcomer to Canada. Some could, sometimes there are families that are accompanied by grandparents. Uh, maybe the, the, the immediate parents aren't the, the caregivers in that particular situation. And so, uh, you know, other times it's just purely economic. Uh, sometimes there are mental health and addiction issues that are attached to this. And so that's why we say uh, we're the only 24-7 no barrier emergency shelter because we'll take people in uh, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. And on a leap year, we'll even do 366 just because we care so much. Poverty and trauma takes an, an enormous toll on people in terms of their mental and physical and emotional health, particularly the children. And so we want to support that. So our vision at In From The Cold is really simple. It's a community where no child or family is homeless. And as we look back at 2017, it was clear to us that child and family homelessness was rising, uh, believe it or not, over previous years. And so for us, this is a little bit of a crisis. We're quite concerned kind of about some of the trajectories that we've been noticing. Uh, well, of course, tons of uh, great uh, progress has been made with respect to the 10-year plan uh, to end homelessness. Uh, we're a little bit concerned uh, around family homelessness and particularly children. So we still need to see progress, we think, uh, in the area of child and family homelessness. Now, to give you an idea, in 2008, when the 10-year plan to end homelessness began, we served 259 unique families at In From The Cold in our emergency shelter. Uh, in 2017, that number was 283. Uh, and so that's almost a 10% increase. And so during that same time frame, uh, you know, homelessness actually in Calgary decreased by 10% overall. And, and so what, when you sort of see overall homelessness going down because of the success of the 10-year plan, which is great, but you see child and family homelessness creeping up, of course, that's a concern. And, uh, you know, an actual statistic that I'm, I'm actually going to read to you because I think you know, it's, it's important is that, you know, in, in the 2008 point in time count of homelessness, there were 197 families that were counted who were experiencing homelessness. So that's a lot. Uh, the winter 2014 count, the number was 209. And so, you know, what you can actually see is this trend. And, uh, you know, for us at In From The Cold, uh, you know, we, we also, in 2017, we were at our capacity or over capacity 61% of the time. And so that's actually a scary thing for us when you're running basically at full all the time. And so we're, we're experiencing uh, an increase, we think. And part of the uh, strategy that we have to address this is uh, what we call the Family Homelessness Information Series. And of course, we're in from the cold, so that's two ends, right? We're a little cheesy about it, we admit it, but hey, you got a brand where you can. So over the next six weeks, uh, we're going to be talking about issues to do with family homelessness, child and family homelessness. So we're going to be talking about some of the differences between uh, home, homelessness kind of with single adults versus children and families. We're going to talk about uh, some data and research. We're definitely going to do a deep dive into trauma-informed care. We're going to look at some of the economic barriers that families face, uh, which are different from singles who are experiencing homelessness. And you know what? We, we need to talk about social inclusion. You know, uh, I'm uh, so grateful we live in Canada where that is such a big part of our value system. But, 
you know, maybe we're not doing as well as we think we are, you know, and so how can we do maybe a little bit better? And then, you know, we want to make a strong case for adequate, uh, you know, housing, affordable housing for families experiencing homelessness. So I just said a whole lot. How many of you are eager to hear now from Kara? <laughs> so. Thanks, Abe. So with that, we're going to dive into our first topic, which is the difference between adult single homelessness and family homelessness. Uh, the three main points we're going to be touching on today is the idea of hidden homelessness and how that relates to families experiencing homelessness and how that interacts with the data that we're able to collect about families experiencing homelessness. The second is Abe is going to explain a little bit about the difference between acuity and complexity and how those are different between adults and families. And the last point is the issue of length of stay in a shelter. Um, because mm. in the sector, that can be a measurement of success. And in addressing family homelessness, it's a little bit different than it would be for a single. So let's dive into our first point. Abe, yeah. do you want to explain to our viewers what hidden homelessness is? Yeah, for sure. So before we talk about hidden homelessness, I, I want to paint a picture of family homelessness and the families who come to you know our family emergency shelter so that we understand the complexity of the issues that they face. So the majority of our families, almost 45%, so that's a pretty high number, uh, arrive at our door because they've run out of alternatives. So that means they, they have uh, all their options that uh, maybe you or I would have are, are gone. So they've been doing couch surfing. Uh, I know that sounds like, I don't know, somebody puts their couch uh, in the ocean and now they're surfing. It's not actually that. Uh, what it means is uh, essentially I'm staying um, on people's couches, uh, which I, we've probably all done it at a certain point if you've been to university or, you know, move from one city to the next. But when you've you, you got children with you, uh, everything is, is profoundly diff different. And of course, you know, uh, at, at our intake, uh, one third of our families literally just say the reason they're here is because they can't afford rent. So it's just I, I had to choose between... Uh, you know, paying rent for my family and I and food or uh, rent and I and power. And I just couldn't absorb all of these things, you know, and, and this is not an in from the cold thing. You know, the, the, uh, the, the city of Calgary, uh, of course, we know that there's about 15,000 families in the city of Calgary who are right on the edge. You know, the uh, Calgary Foundation recently did a tremendous study that showed this and it, it is massive. Uh, the amount of economic anxiety that is out there. People not feeling that they're able to absorb all of their costs. And so, you know, when you think about, uh, you know, families who are at risk of homelessness in Calgary, that number of 15,000 is actually pretty accurate. Uh, and, 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 and sort of people say, well, how do you get that number? Well, these are, this is sort of the estimate of the number of families who are paying more than 50% of their income on rent. And whenever you're paying more than 50% of your income, not on a mortgage, but just on rent, uh, all of a sudden you realize these families are, you know, that proverbial one paycheck away from experiencing homelessness. So uh, similar to adult homelessness, um, where in, in uh, the last homeless count, about 20% of the uh, homeless were indigenous, of course, um, in, uh, in, and so that's a higher number because only about three or four percent of Calgarians are indigenous, but about 20 percent are homeless. Uh, at in from the cold, what we've seen is about 60 percent of our families are indigenous. And so, um, you know, in, in all, about a fifth of our families who walk through our front door uh, come from a reserve, uh, a First Nations reserve directly to our shelter. And so, you know, like every family that we take care of, they're, they're looking for the same things mm -hmm. as we are all looking for, and that is better opportunity for their children. Uh, but of course, you know, particularly with Indigenous families, uh, discrimination obviously is a big factor. I'm going to just use the term racism. I mean, it, it's absolutely still there. Um, and then, you know, of course, lack of education and employment opportunities and affordable housing hold back these Indigenous families. And so, you know, of course, these families do everything they can to not have to come to shelter. I mean, this is not a comfortable environment, and please reach out. Uh, to any of us, if you'd ever like a tour, we'd love to walk you through in from the cold so you see that. But, you know, when we talk about people doing everything they can to avoid coming to a shelter, what that really means is hidden homelessness. So that is, you know, people doing everything they can to divert it, uh, to push it away. 
And, and so, you know, um, not a whole lot of families will sleep rough, like literally under a bridge, but there are all kinds of families who are hidden in terms of their homelessness. So when we talk about uh, hidden homelessness, you know, what the, what the stats tell us is that for every person who's in a shelter, that there are at least three people uh, who are experiencing hidden homelessness for uh, unsheltered. So, you know, if, if uh, you know, In From The Cold had 100 people here last night, then there are another 300 people who are outside of In From The Cold who are what we would call the hidden homeless. And so, you know, it, it's kind of scary to me when you think about the fact that we've been full 60% of the time or more in 2017, and yet there's probably triple the number of people uh, who are in our shelter uh, compared to who are out, who are hidden homeless. They're sleeping on couches. They're sleeping in their cars. Often they're in tough situations. Why do they not come to shelters? Well, sometimes because they don't feel safe. Uh, and that's, you know, maybe they're afraid of, uh, you know, what they might experience in shelter. But sometimes what they're more afraid of is the displacement, of course, to their family structure and to their routine. And that is a major concern, of course, when you're dealing with, uh, with children. You know, 57% of our families here at In From The Cold are single moms. And, of course, for those folks, about half of them tell us that they're also fleeing domestic violence. Um, and that may be the primary reason they're homeless. It may be one of the reasons that they're homeless. Uh, but nonetheless, it's, it's in that ingredient list. Yeah. Can you explain to our viewers about what complexity is, what acuity is, and how that's different between singles and adults, uh, singles and families? Yeah, no, great question. So, you know, interestingly, you know, when, when the 10-year plan uh, to um, end homelessness came out, there were all kinds of... Um, data-driven measures so we can understand homelessness better. Makes a lot of sense, right? We need to track this so we can understand what's going on and figure out how to reduce it. And again, uh, from the perspective of from the cold, these initiatives have been super successful. Uh, one of the measures that they came up with was this idea of chronicity. So how long has a person been homeless? And, uh, you know, I was the director of programs at the Calgary Drop-In Center for, uh, for a number of years prior to coming here. And interestingly, at the Calgary Drop-In Center, for example, um, about, uh, uh, well, about 600 people have been there for more than a year. So, of course, uh, you could imagine if you've been homeless for more than a year, the impact that that has on you. Um, you know, your, your social skills, uh, the impact it has, of course, on your bank account, the impact that it has on your mental health, uh, your emotional health, your physical health. So then, partnered with chronicity, which is a length of stay, is then this idea of acuity, which is, you know, the longer you've been homeless, often the worse the outcomes in your physical health, your mental health, of course, your emotional health, and absolutely in your financial health. So, and it just makes sense, right? If, if a person's in a, in a homeless shelter for a couple of weeks and it's just an emergency thing and they bounce back on their feet, life is good. You know, it was a quick episode. Uh, but when somebody's been homeless for more than a year, we're talking about essentially a person's entire life being impacted at every possible level. I think for families, often families aren't homeless for a huge length of time. You know, so our average flow through and in from the cold, so the average length of time a family stays with us is about 40 days. So that is, is uh, pretty awesome. So sometimes people hear that and they say, well, okay, it's great because, you know, they're homeless for a short period of time and they don't really need a lot of supports and life is good. But what we talk about here at In From The Cold a lot is the complexity that comes into the picture. Uh, you know, complexity meaning things like the economic disadvantage that these families obviously have. Uh, the fact that to get into a right-sized unit is so much more difficult for a family than it would be for a single. There is a tremendous number of empty units available right now um, for singles, uh, studio apartments, that kind of thing. Uh, for families, larger three-bedroom suites, uh, the, the, the number of those is very low. Uh, obviously, things like the impact on brain development of that early childhood trauma. You know, children coming into shelter are traumatized just by walking in the front door and the discrimination that occurs, of course, because of the fact that now other kids in school know that they're living in a, in a homeless shelter. And so, you know, this, this impact on their brain development has massive downstream 
uh, implications within their lives, the development of their social skills, uh, their own capacity to do well in school. And, and so we spend a lot of time thinking about how can we intervene in terms of toxic stress and trauma and support these families to do better. So kind of what we see here, I guess the, to sum it all up, is um, though we might not see people who are homeless families for this massive length of time, often the amount of uh, complex factors that have led them to be in, in from the cold means that just getting them housed isn't the, the whole answer. We need to do a lot more to support those families so that they can be stable. Now, Abe, can you talk a little bit more about length of stay and how that's a measure of success yeah. in the system of care? Length of stay is one of these uh, measures that they use. You know, how long does somebody end up staying in a shelter? And so the majority of emergency shelter users at Calgary's largest single adult emergency shelter, the Calgary Drop-In Center, uh, are transitional users who stay just over one week. So about 84% of the people. Um, and of course, for us in 2017, the average length of stay for families in our emergency shelter was a little under 40 days. And of course, what we're starting to see uh, this year, uh, and actually uh, for a good chunk of last year, was that length of stay number increasing. Okay, So in 2016, it was about 35 days. Uh, near the end of 2017, it was getting up to 37 days. Uh, we're starting to see in 2018 a little bit of a longer length of stay, 39, maybe 40 days. And so what, oh, what does this tell us? Well, it tells us not only is the complexity increasing, but it also tells us that we need to see more affordable, right-sized housing for families because our average family size is about three children here. And so it's tough uh, to put three children into a two-bedroom uh, type of unit. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And so, you know, the most important factor we found in getting families out of an emergency shelter uh, is, is affordable housing. And uh, affordable housing is one part of the, uh, the factor. Uh, I'm going to call it a three-legged stool. You need affordable housing. You need, obviously, some, time, some type of rent uh, supplement. And then the third thing you need is, is supports. So when you talk about what kind of supports... Uh, we're talking about culturally specific supports, particularly if they're Indigenous families or newcomers to Canada. Um, you know, they need, they need supports and languages that work for them in a culturally appropriate way. Uh, obviously, they need access to childcare. They need proximity to resources like schools and job training and employment because, you know, it's unreasonable to expect a single mom with three kids to become independent without, uh, you know, affordable daycare, without access to transit, without having uh, hospitals and schools and uh, access to medical facilities and grocery stores close by. And so when we think about, you know, kind of affordable housing, you know, sometimes people say, well, why don't you buy, uh, you know, why doesn't it from the cold buy a piece of land, I don't know, in, in one of the suburbs. And, uh, you know, I personally, my family and I, we live in Evanston, which is a nice suburb in northwest Calgary. I mean, it's kind of average middle-class neighborhood. Sounds great to bring our families there. But things like access to transit in a community like that are, are terrible. <laughs> Sorry, Calgary Transit, but it's true. And so, you know, the reality of what we're talking about is how do we make sure that we, we get these uh, vulnerable families? It's okay for me. I have a car. But for a family who is, is in a place where they don't have uh, access to resources the way that, that, that our family would, um, you know, they, they need to make sure that they have schools, you know, kind of within walking distance or that the busing system is adequate. Uh, mom's going to need access to affordable child care uh, or the dad so that they can go back to school themselves or they can get a job. Of course, um, things like, uh, you know, groceries, you know, uh, we all need to eat. Uh, and if there's not a grocery store in the neighborhood, then it sure is tough if you don't have a vehicle uh, to, court, of course, take care of those, those children. So, you know, for an agency like In From The Cold, we need to be really strategic about where can we add affordable housing to the mixture so that it really makes sense. Um, so to close, there's so much more to talk about. And throughout the next six weeks, we're going to be diving deeper into the details. We only just scratched the surface today in this video. So stay tuned for our blog post that's coming up. That's going to dive further into the research that Abe was explaining today. And be sure to visit our website, infromthecold.org, 
for access to different links and resources where you yourself can learn more about family homelessness. Please send us your thoughts and questions and share this video and any other things we share on our social media this week. And be sure to join the conversation. We want to hear your thoughts and your opinions. Uh, please join us next week when we will be talking about the role of data and research in family homelessness. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Thank Thanks, you. Dave.